Howdy folks, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut. I've got a real video for you today. It's a, it's a bit of a phone in, but it's, it's not as bad as the last one. So today I'm gonna talk about the trunnion for the BFG 50A, and that's kind of the heart of the, of the receiver of the gun. And it's this part right here that gets the serial number and all the nomenclature engraved on it. And it's what the barrel extension plugs into. And uh, it's really badass alloy steel, heat treated. It's not a really high level of heat treat. It's a Rockwell C34 for you materials and engineering type nerds out there. Uh, and the main reason it is that low, of a, well, it's hardened because it needs to be strong, but it's not super hard because this whole receiver weldment gets nitrited. And for those of you who know, the nearly 1,000 degree Fahrenheit process of nitriding will knock the hardness back. It's, you know, you're basically changing the temper on it. So if this thing, this thing was Rockwell C40 something, it's going down to 34 because that's what happens. And uh, I've talked about that in the past and I'm gonna become very unpopular in the future talking about it for certain applications. <laughs> I think I've been saying that for years now. Anyway, uh, so what's kind of funny is we, we used to make these, they're actually a casting and we used to do all the machining and it was a real pain because that bore in there is is beautiful and it's within i think the tolerance is plus one thousandth of an inch so it's got to be right on the money very very close because if it's not then the barrel extension will rattle around and, and your accuracy suffers so it's it's critical but what's funny and like most of the things i say funny not funny uh we had a vendor actually machine the castings this time and at a certain point, uh, I realized that I was going to change the de design to the Mark II, which this is. Uh, and the original one, the, the whole configuration was a lot different. It didn't have a thread in here, and it didn't have a nice smooth bore for a piston that was supposed to go in there, which doesn't anymore. But anyway, so a lot of things changed, and I had to have the vendor uh, hold off on finishing this face here. So we got all these parts. In fact, I'll just show you what it looks like. Oh look, now there are two parts. How did that happen? Huh. So anyway, um, yeah, nothing done on the face at all. So that is good for him because we paid him the same amount of money. But uh, you know, all this stuff, all this extra stuff. These are these are just lightning holes. These six holes here, uh, and between those and doing this bore and thread milling and doing the little threaded holes for the spokes. It's uh, almost 20 minutes of work on this thing because it's, you know, it's hardened and it's not super fast to, uh, to machine. I'm just, I'm just noticing. I just ran a bunch of these and, and I, I missed, I missed deburring a spot and that annoys me, but anyway. So, um, I'm going to show you what the machining operation, this final machining operation is like for these trunnions and you can watch along with me. Okay, first this is called peck drilling. This is where you just drill in and out. And uh, these are the smaller diameter lightning holes. There are four of them on the trunnion. Lots of coolant spraying on there. Keep things from just getting destroyed. Um, but yeah, it's uh, they're high speed steel drills. Yeah, I, I guess if you wanted to go, go all out, you could use carbide drills and not even use coolant and, and haul ass. But, and I don't know, we might get there or we might just have the vendor do these completely next time. In fact, that's probably a the good plan to go with. Now one thing that was a real nightmare on these is this tapping operation. I mean holy crap. Uh, I started off trying to tap it and I just did the standard numbers. Now you look up your machinery's handbook and it tells you what drill size for what particular tap. And but Basically the, the bigger the hole the easier it is on, on the tap but the, the sloppier the thread is and the tighter the hole the better the thread and harder on the tap it is so I I start off with the the basic nominal one that they suggest and that just I was breaking taps left and right so I I said well let me just thread mill this thing and uh, that was an exercise in futility well it worked but I was breaking these these really expensive little thread mills I mean they're little tiny carbide things and they're so small you could barely see the damn end of them uh, and they, they weren't lasting very well they were lasting like not even 10 parts it was like and hey, this is just absurd you know so I finally got back to tapping, hell, a year later, and I basically, as you can see here, there's no coolant on it. I just drilled the next drill size up, and I put molybdenum disulfide grease in the holes, and man, it made all the difference in the world. So 
yay. <laughs> and, and what's funny too is I started out peck tapping, which is where you go a little bit of depth at a time. You you drill it or you tap in and come out, tap in a little more, come out, and man, it, it works, but it's uh, it's slow. So my buddy's like, man, just plunge it in there, do it in one shot, and sure enough, as you can see, it works. And man, that's so that's I, I'm really psyched right now because you know. It, I was stuck with with no trunnions because I couldn't figure out what the hell to do, and the vendor couldn't get to these. And anyway, so now problem solved, yay! So here's some more drilling. Uh, you know, nothing super exciting. Did I mention on that the, my last video about the trigger mag housings? I actually used AI. I actually plugged into Grok, the G code that does the spot drilling for all these holes, and it, they were going all over over the place, back and forth over this foot long piece, and it was taking a lot of time. So. I told Grok, hey, optimize these things for you know going from one side to the other on the part instead of going back and forth and back and forth. And man, it saved 40 seconds, which doesn't sound like much, but it, it was a two-minute operation. So that's a percentage-wise, that's a big savings. So that's pretty cool. You know, AI isn't just for making crazy videos. All right, so this operation, this is called thread milling, and this is what I was talking about. This a little tiny thread mill for those little spoke holes, but this is uh, the big thread mill the gas cylinder. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is the the piston that's inside the cylinder and this is one all screwed together with a little cap on it and everything and uh, yeah these are these are cool. So this is what threads into that hole. Wait is it gonna thread in? Ha 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 of course it will. Yeah it's you know originally when I did the Mark II the piston was completely inside of here and I was so excited about that because it was so neat and compact and that didn't work because I didn't have enough room and the piston wasn't big enough. So that was my my big mistake that uh, really delayed the BFG 50A Mark II coming out. And uh, man, painful, painful. But now you know this is it's a cool solution. Um, these uh, they work great and I like it better than the original direct impingement. Sorry, Gun Jesus. Direct impingement is cool, but that. Uh, that alignment is so critical, uh, getting the gas tube in there, man. It's just a, a real pain in the butt. And we were, for some reason, the, the bolt carrier coming back, it, it would Chinese finger trap the, the end of the of the gas tube every now and then and, and yank the thing out and, and break break off a little flange that holds it in place. And uh, it's just, it was very annoying. Here's that thread mill again without millions of gallons of coolant blowing on it. Um, I had to squirt it every now and then because, as you could see, it was getting hot and putting steam off. So I didn't want didn't want it to burn up. Probably wouldn't because, you know, it's not not that intensive an operation. It's not really hauling ass that much. Now this is a, a hole that could probably be tapped with a tap, and uh, you know, if you like seeing taps explode into lots of pieces, that's always fun. But <laughs> now I I think it would be totally fine to, to use a tap. Uh, the nice thing about thread milling is that you can lie to the CNC machine's controller uh, about the diameter, what's called the diameter offset. So you can tell it it's a couple thousandths bigger or a couple thousandths smaller, and you can, you know, the machine will compensate. It's called cutter radius compensation. And you can cut a bigger thread or a smaller thread. And yeah, you can do that with a tap. You just buy different taps, and they're adjusted up and down a couple thousandths, whatever. But uh, but this is handy. You can do it on the fly. Say, yeah, you know what? That that hole is getting a little tight. Let me just uh, change the offset a little bit, and you're you're back on spec again. Uh, now here we go. You know, finished product. It's a uh, it's a nice looking part. I mean, it's very shiny, right? That's that's why I do this. Remember, it's shiny parts, shiny metal. But you can see all those nice uh, broken edges around all those holes. Nice nice little tiny chamfer there, so you don't have to go and deburr at all. And uh, yeah, it's ready to go and get welded into a receiver now and uh, that part's kind of a lot of work and you know a lot of the parts of this gun are, are a lot of work and they're expensive because you know it's an expensive gun that's uh, you know you're using bigger parts than normal and you're using uh, lots of material and there are a lot of issues with making a, a gun like this it's like why can't it cost three thousand dollars you make it for three thousand dollars see how that goes see how long you're in business <laughs> I don't know, I guess if you made millions of them, that, and that's the problem, is that this isn't a high volume uh, gun for, a, you know, a, like a Ruger or somebody like that. It's just, it's just not, not that many people, you know. I know Palmetto State said they're going to be working on a semi-auto 50, but I, I don't know. I c can't imagine that they're going to find a really big market for that, because semi-auto 50 and cheap just 
don't really go together. I, you know, I, I try, trust me, but anyway. All right, folks. Well, I appreciate you watching as always. It's always nice to have you waste your time. Why now? <laughs> Taking time out of your day to watch me blab at a camera. Um, you know, I try to put out stuff there that's useful and will make you a better person. <laughs> oh, one last thing. Uh, I've, as you'll notice, the coolant on the machine, it's not so disgusting. So we finally solved the uh, machine having AIDS issue. We just got a, this really expensive uh, antibacterial stuff that we add to the coolant. Plus, turns out the guy who was mixing the coolant wasn't, uh, wasn't doing it quite right. So it was a little, uh, it didn't have enough. The ratio wasn't quite quite right, so it had issues there. But anyway, uh, oh, another thing, we're still looking for a building. Uh, time's running out, so I'm not quite scared, but close cousin to scared. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, anybody got any industrial buildings for sale? You know of any in Tampa? Anywhere from hell? I'll take anything from 2,000 to 8,000 square feet. I'll, I'll make it work. Uh, and we're trying to buy something, and it's man, it's slim pickings right now. All right, well, thanks, folks. Appreciate you watching as always, and I will catch you next time.